Hi, I am super excited about today's video. I created a graph user interface for my Obsidian Vault using my Excolidraw Obsidian plugin that resembles the graph interface of the Brain application. You know, this one. So, how does this work? In the center, I have the central thought or object, which is the document that's currently open. In this case, the storyboard for my video today. You can see the storyboard right here. This storyboard or this topic has two parents. Partly, it is the YouTube channel map of content. And this is where I manage all of my YouTube projects on a Kanban board. And I had a video on this, my YouTube workflow, a couple of days ago. And then the other parent to this document is the hat rack that you can see right here on the screen. And the hat rack is here because the graph interface is an example of the hierarchy aspect of latch. For those of you that are not familiar with what latch means, the term latch was coined by Richard Saul Warman in his book Information Anxiety, and it stands for the five ways how you can organize information. And these five ways are location, alphabet, time, category, and hierarchy. I already shared some videos about the location aspect. It was a video about map view and another video about fantasy maps of content. Recently, I published a video about time, how I'm managing the aspect of time in my meeting notes and daily notes. And today we are talking about hierarchy. And then this note also has some children. The children are the objects that are embedded. Well, actually the latch object is embedded as well, but I specifically specified that latch should be apparent to this document. I'll show you in a bit how. So that's why it's shown as a parent. But you can see here, this is the script engine icon. And then I have the Obsidian the Brain thumbnail, which is this right here. This image is also embedded. It's not shown here because in the settings I disabled the uh, attachments to show on my graph. But if I would turn that on, then that would show here as well. And on the right hand side, you can see the siblings of the central thought. And these are my other videos on my Kanban board. And on the left hand side, these are the lateral moves, so called jumps using the brain lingo and in this case the storyboard on obsidian the brain is related to the brain if i click the brain then a similar mind map comes in in this case the right hand side is quite busy because the brain is in my technology category and i have lots of technology items there but here on this other part of the graph you can see that the brain is a type of mind mapping tool. And if I open up my mind mapping tools category, you can see I have a set of different mind mapping tools here and mind mapping is within the, or mind mapping tools are within the mind mapping category. And again, you can see that mind mapping is sort of similar to argument mapping and concept mapping as well as sketchnoting is related to mind mapping because you can sketchnote a mind map and if I click on my sketchnoting MOC then you can see my MOC page come up here with all sorts of notes. So that's the basic logic of how this works. Let's take this example right here and understand how the various elements work on this page. So first of all my brain user interface uses the breadcrumbs plugin and so you need to install the breadcrumbs plugin and configure it and all i'm doing is i'm displaying this list of breadcrumbs in this structured manner using the brain user interface i have three types of relationships breadcrumbs has a little more and i'll explain you the difference. 
So I use three different relationships. I use the children relationship. In this case, the children are verbal to visual, quick draw, and so on. The parents, there's only one parent, is drawing and painting. And I have a couple of jumps here that you can see right here. The siblings are calculated. You can also notice I have two colors here. I actually have three type of colors on this chart you can see too. The ones that are a bit more bluish are not breadcrumbs. They are links referenced in this document. You can turn this off and only see the breadcrumbs. In this case, or for me, I like to see all of the links. And the links that, are, that don't have a breadcrumb, the logic will be if it is a backlink, then it will be a parent. If it is a link, then it's going to be a child. So let's go back to today's storyboard and let's just understand a bit more about this uh, setup. As I've mentioned already, the brain navigation is a form of organizing and navigating your hierarchy in your graph. I'm using breadcrumbs to visualize my vault and breadcrumbs recognizes directions. Indeed, you need to set up hierarchies in breadcrumb settings. So if you come here to breadcrumbs, you can open up the hierarchies settings and you can see that this is the hierarchy that I've set up. I have various upward uh, relations, parents yesterday and this week. I have siblings that I actually don't specifically uh, highlight. You can also specify here uh, that same parent uh, is siblings. So if I share a parent, then that is considered a sibling. I turned this on. And then I have children and tomorrow are the downward relationships and the lateral relationship are jump and previous but I'm only using the jumps and also in the brain interface, I'm not showing the two directions. I'm only showing jumps and previous together on the left-hand side. Now, you can say troubleshooting, but things to keep in mind. So when you're using breadcrumbs, you will probably need to initialize the index before you start to use the brain user interface. And you can do this by opening the matrix view of breadcrumbs and clicking on refresh index. And once you've done that and you start the brain interface, I'll show you in a second how to do that. Then the whole setup is going to work. Breadcrumbs is a bit complex. I do recommend reading about the settings and the logic, but once you get the hang of it, it is a very well developed plugin and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. And finally, this is a limitation and I hope eventually this limitation will go away, but breadcrumbs assumes unique file names. That means that when you have files with the same name, but in different folders, in breadcrumbs, you will not be able to distinguish between them. So that is causing a bit of a problem. I've started to rename my files so they are unique, but also I plan to work with the developer of breadcrumbs to sort this out and have an option to use unique file names as defined by the complete file path. As mentioned, this whole setup is inspired by the brain and I highly recommend that you try out the brain if you like this sort of graph interface. And once again, this is the logic of how the nodes appear on the graph view. You have the central node in the center. You have the children below, the parents above, the jumps on the left-hand side and the siblings on the right-hand side in the graph view. And this script is available in the Excalidro script engine store. And what you need to pay attention to is the script will overwrite the active drawing. So the way you start the script, and let me show you how you would start in a blank setting. You open a new document, you click on the Obsidian icon, 
and you click the icon of the brain interface with just this icon for you it's going to show under downloaded scripts and not under user scripts it's in user scripts because i'm now using a local copy of this file because i'm still editing it but when i click this then first a message came up that was a very short-lived message telling me that I should open a document on the left hand side and that was already done and it also reminded me that I should refresh the breadcrumbs index and from here on this is going to work you click the items and the documents open up or you click the documents and the related graph opens here on the right hand side an additional cool feature is if you switch from view mode back to edit mode and you click the button again you see this message up here brain graph is off this means that now the graph is not running anymore so if i navigate for example to this document this will stay as is and you can edit this to your liking because this is now an ex draw drawing with these uh, documents as links so these are actually uh, individual links right here so these are uh, nice uh, links you can see and you can do whatever you want in terms of changing this drawing you can change the color of it you can draw on it this is now a normal ex drawing but when you turn the script engine on again or the brain graph view engine on again then this drawing is going to disappear and it automatically turns into this automatically generated graph if you don't like the colors i've set up here you can go to ex draw settings and every script can have uh, settings this has quite a number of settings so if you scroll to the bottom of the list you will see here this is the brain like interface i call it here brainplex but it will have a slightly different name in the store anyway you will find it and you can see all the different settings so for example i have hide attachments and infernal breadcrumb links uh, turned on as well as you can change the font type so let's say i want handwritten fonts and i want a bit rougher edges and i actually want sharp rectangles now if i come back and reinitiate this graph view again then you can see that the graph view has changed and now the lines are not so straight they are a bit more sketchy and the character or the font type or font face has changed so finally i want to show you the source code as well not because i want to explain it to you just because this is the art of the possible so this is a script engine code uh, and if you're interested you can also go and read the code i'm pretty sure you will find things that you would do better and i'm more than happy if you come back with some recommendations how to make this code better and let's close this discussion today just showing you the storyboard for today so what we talked about was the brain like interface for obsidian and this is inspired by the brain this is a an implementation of using the hierarchy as a navigation principle in your vault and as i mentioned earlier the more ways you can access your knowledge in your vault the better you can reuse that information so you should aim to implement methods along all five of these categories to access your data in the graph and we talked about the breadcrumbs and some of the limitations around it and we talked about this warning that you need to pay attention to 
which document you initiate this script on because it will overwrite that document. However, there's that additional feature that you can stop the script at any time and you can simply use the drawing to customize it for your own purposes. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Thank you.